The Bible says, And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. So God repents. He changes his mind. He doesn't destroy the city. Why? Because he saw their works. And what's so important about this verse is it defines turning from your evil way as works. God calls that works. You turn from your sin, you turn from your evil way, you, you stop sinning and you turn over a new leaf and you start doing good. Congratulations, God wants you to do that, but you know what you're doing? You're doing good works. And if that's what you're trusting in to be saved and go to heaven, you're going to go to hell when you die. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, for by grace... Remember, Noah was saved by grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If turning from your evil way is a work according to God, you cannot trust in that to be saved and go to heaven. It's not about you. When you believe that your efforts and your works and your doing right has anything to do with you going to heaven, what you're doing is you're stealing the glory from Jesus Christ. Or you're suggesting that what he did when he died on that cross and rose again from the dead was not enough to pay for your sins. It was not enough to save your soul and that you need to add your own works to it and you're bringing down the name of Jesus Christ instead of just accepting that free gift. And oftentimes people unwittingly unknowingly are, are buying into this repent of your sins for salvation because they haven't thought it all the way through because it hasn't been explained to them they haven't seen everything in context they've only heard a couple of very vague verses being preached and a preacher just spout off repent of your sins repent of your sins you gotta repent of your sins and be saved it's not what the bible teaches Mark 1, verse number 4, the Bible says, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So now you can look at that. You have a little bit more evidence to say, see, he was preaching repentance for your sins to be remitted, for your sins to go away, for, that, for, for salvation. There's more evidence there solid saying, you see, what he was preaching with repentance has to do with being saved. But when we jump down a little bit further in the context now of this passage, look at verse number 14. The Bible says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The repentance that was required is, you need to believe the gospel. Now, Flip over if you were to Acts chapter 19, because I want to cover this real quick before I get into explaining the rest of uh, Mark 1.15 there. Because Paul explains very clearly what the baptism of repentance literally is that John the Baptist was preaching. When he said, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, this is what he was saying. Acts 19, and you might want to make note of this or highlight this. Um, if anyone wants to try to tell you, because they'll tell you, well, Jesus and John the Baptist preach repentance. Acts 19, verse 4, Paul tells you exactly what he was preaching. Acts 19, 4, the Bible says, Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. Is that what John was doing? We saw in Mark 1, 4, and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So what John the Baptist was preaching in his baptism of repentance for the remission of sins is what Paul is about to say here in Acts 19, 4. John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, this is what he said, they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. So when John preached the baptism of repentance, he said, you need to believe on Jesus Christ. That's what it meant. That's, that's what his baptism of repentance meant. In order to be saved, in order for your sins to be remitted, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, doesn't that match up perfectly with what everything else in the Bible already says? 
Doesn't that match up with what Jesus said when he says, repent ye and believe the gospel? You say, well, then what, why does it say repent? I don't understand. It's because you're still thinking that repent has to do with sins. Remember at the beginning of the sermon, I, I, I explained the word repent just means you're changing your mind about something. The reason why people need to repent in order to believe the, the gospel, in order to believe on Jesus Christ, is because they weren't already believing on Jesus to be saved. They were believing in something else. If you believe today that you have to be a good person to go to heaven, in order for you to be saved and go to heaven, you need to repent. You need to rethink. You need to change your mind and say, you know what? No. That's not going to get me to heaven because I'm a sinner. No amount of good works that I do is going to get me to heaven. You need to change your mind and understand and admit, I need a Savior. My works won't cut it. I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to put all my faith now in Jesus Christ because He paid for my sins. Now I'm believing something different than I was before. I've changed my mind. I've repented. Now I believe in Jesus Christ. Now you're saved. Whether it be Islam, Catholicism, whatever, idolatry, false religion, the religion of the Pharisees, Judaism, in order to be saved, you have to repent of that belief and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Fill in the blank of whatever it is anybody's trusting to be saved and believe on Jesus Christ. That's what repentance is in regards to being saved. So depending on the context, sometimes repentance or the word repent has nothing to do with salvation. But when we see it used specifically in the context of being saved, as in John the Baptist preached the gospel of or the repentance, the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, Remission of sins. Okay, yeah, we're talking about salvation. We're talking about your sins being remitted. They're being paid for. Well, that specifically is you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is spelled and defined very clearly from Scripture. Acts 19.4, Paul stated unequivocally, that's what John taught. That's what he said. That's what the baptism of repentance is. Matches up perfectly with Acts 16, 30 and 31, which very explicitly says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do? What do I have to do? I want to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Very clear verses. We're not, we're not talking about some parable. We're not talking about people perishing at the Tower of Siloam and you know, all this other stuff. We're talking about someone asks a question, hey, I want to be saved. What do I have to do? And very clear answer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and, and thou shalt be saved. Very clear scripture. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is brought up. Obviously, we're talking about salvation. For God sent His Son in the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You notice what we're not hearing in that verse at all? Turning from your sins. Repent of your sins. Live a good life. Do what's right. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. Follow His commandments. None of that. But in context, are those verses talking about salvation? Absolutely they are. Very clearly they are. John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Not he that believeth and turns from his sins. He that believeth. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. 